dive into the heart of Rome's allure with our guide, Roaming in Rome. Perfect for beginners, this video unveils the city's wonders, offering insider tips on navigating the historic streets, savoring local cuisine, and capturing unforgettable moments. Get ready for a Roman experience like no other. The history of the center of Rome is connected to the broader history of the Roman civilization. Here's an overview of the city's history during major time periods. Founding in early Rome, According to legend, Rome was founded in 750 BC by Romulus and Remus. The early settlement was a monarchy with a series of kings, including the legendary figures and the last king, Tarquin the Proud. Roman Republic The Roman Republic was marked by the development of the city-state and the establishment of the Republican government. Rome expanded its territories through conquests and wars, leading to the incorporation of various regions into the city-state. Significant structures such as the Roman Forum were built during this period. Roman Empire Augustus became the first Roman Emperor in 27 BC, leading to the transformation of Rome into the capital of a vast empire. The city experienced significant growth and construction, including the Colosseum, the Pantheon, and the expansion of the Roman Forum. The Imperia Fora, Trojans Forum, and the Forum of Nerva were constructed during the early centuries of the empire. Late Antiquity. The decline of the Western Roman Empire affected Rome's prosperity and the city faced economic challenges. The sack of Rome by the Visigoths in 410 CE and the Vandals in 455 CE contributed to the decline of the city's population and prestige. Middle Ages. Rome went through a period of decline and transformation during the early Middle Ages. The city became a significant center for Christianity with the establishment of the Vatican and the construction of St. Peter's Basilica in the 4th century. The city was frequently subjected to invasions by various Germanic tribes and suffered from political instability. Renaissance and Baroque Eras The Renaissance witnessed a revival of interest in classical art and culture, with Rome becoming a hub for artistic and agricultural achievements. The construction of St. Peter's Basilica continued, and the cityscape was enriched by works of artists like Michelangelo and Raphael. Modern Rome Rome became the capital of the unified kingdom of Italy in 1871. The city underwent significant urban development in the late 19th and 20th centuries. Rome played a central role in the Italian politics, especially during the fascist era under Mussolini. In the post-war period, Rome became a symbol of Italy's culture, heritage, hosting international events such as the 1960 Summer Olympics. Airports Leonardo da Vinci, symbol FCO, location about 35 kilometers southwest of Rome's city center. It's the primary international airport serving Rome, offering flights to numerous destinations worldwide. Also, there's CIA, location approximately 13 kilometers southeast of Rome's city center. It's a secondary airport used primarily for low-cost carriers offering both domestics and international flights. If you're flying in from the United States like I did, I would fly right into Leonardo da Vinci, FCO, and then if you go anywhere else in Italy, you can take off from there. Train stations, the main one is Roma Termini, which is the known as also as the Termini Station, the main railroad station in Rome, located in the city center. It serves as a major transportation hub, connecting national and international routes. Orientation. Rome, the capital city of Italy, is located in the central western part of the country. Here are some key aspects of the orientation of Rome. Geographic location. Rome is situated in the Lazio region of Italy on the western side of the Italian peninsula. The city is located on the Tiber River, about 24 kilometers inland from the Tyrrhenian Sea. Cardinal points. The historic city center is characterized by its seven hills. To the east of the Tiber River lies the Vatican City, an independent city-state, and the spiritual and administrative center of the Roman Catholic Church. Landmarks and districts. Major landmarks such as the Colosseum, Roman Forum, Palatine Hill are located in the central part of Rome. The Vatican City with St. Peter's Basilica and Vatican Museum is situated in the northwest of the historic center. Trastevere is a charming historic district located in the west bank of the Tiber River. Urban layout, Rome's historic center is a mix of narrow winding streets and piazzas. 
Surrounded by ancient ruins, Renaissance palaces, and Baroque churches, the city is known for its well-preserved historical sites, classical architecture, and vibrant neighborhood. City expansion over the centuries, Rome has expanded beyond its ancient walls, encompassing a mix of historic districts and modern neighborhoods. The city's layout reflects its rich history with ancient ruins interspread among more contemporary structures. Sleeping in Rome offers a wide range of accommodations, options to suit different preferences and budgets. Here are some popular choices. Hotels. Rome has a vast selection of hotels ranging from budget-friendly to luxury. Areas like the historic center near the Colosseum, Pantheon, and Spanish Steps, Trastavare are popular for hotel accommodations. Guest houses and bed and breakfasts. For more intimate experience, consider staying in a guest house or a bed and breakfast. These are often located in charming neighborhoods, providing a more personalized experience. Apartments and vacation rentals. Renting an apartment or vacation home can be an excellent option for those seeking more space and the ability to prepare their own meals. Platforms like Airbnb offer a variety of choices across the city. Luxury accommodations. Rome boasts luxurious hotels with stunning views, top-notch amenities, and proximity to major attractions. Areas like Via Veneto and Piazza Novana are known for high-end accommodations. Hostels budget conscious travelers can find several hostels in Rome, especially around Termini Station. These are ideal for those looking for a social atmosphere and shared accommodations. Trastavere accommodations. Trastavere district is known for its bohemian atmosphere and offers a range of accommodations from boutique hotels to cozy guest houses. Vatican City area. Staying near Vatican City allows easy access to St. Peter's Basilica and Vatican Museums. There are various hotels and guest houses in this area. Historic City Center. Boutique hotels in the historic center provide a blend of modern comfort and historical charm. They are often within walking distance of major landmarks. Eco-friendly accommodations for environmentally conscious travelers. There are eco-friendly hotels and accommodations in Rome that prioritize sustainability. Family-friendly options. Some hotels and apartment rentals cater specifically to families providing amenities and services suitable for children. Eating in Rome is a gastronomic delight, offering a diverse range of traditional Italian dishes and local specialties. Here are some tips for experiencing a culinary delight of the eternal city. Trastorias and Osterias. Choose local Trastorias and Osterias for an authentic Roman dining experience. These establishments offer a feature a cozy atmosphere and serve traditional Roman dishes. Try Roman pasta dishes such as a carbonara, which is egg and pecorino cheese and pancetta. Pizza Romana, taste the Roman style pizza known for its thin and crispy crust. Popular varieties include margarita and marinara. And then you have crispy Roman artichokes. If visiting during the spring, indulge in the famous Roman style artichokes, a seasoned delicacy. Local markets, blow the local markets like the Mercado to discover fresh produce, cheese, cured meats, and other Italian delights. Gelato, treat yourself to authentic Italian gelato. Seek out reputable gelaterias that use high quality ingredients for a truly indulgent experience. Coffee culture, embrace the Italian coffee culture. Order a classic espresso cappuccino, but only in the morning, or try a local favorite like a macchiato. And then die in, in Trastavere neighborhood for its vibrant food scene. This area is known for its charming streets and a variety of restaurants serving both traditional and modern cuisine. Tiramisu, conclude your meal with the classic Roman dessert, Tiramisu. Many restaurants and bakeries in Rome offer their own delicious versions. Wine, enjoy the local rinds. Order a glass of wine and enjoy a complimentary snack before dinner. Sites. Rome is a city steeped in history and culture, with a lot of iconic landmarks and historical sites to explore. Here are some must-haves sites in Rome. Colosseum, the iconic Roman amphitheater known for its grandeur and historical significance. It once hosted gladiatorial contests and public spectacles. Roman Forum, an ancient forum that served as the center of Roman public life. Explore the ruins of temples, basilicas, and government buildings. Pantheon, a marvel of Roman engineering, the Pantheon is well-preserved ancient temple known for its iconic dome and impressive interior. Trevi Fountain, one of the most famous fountains in the world, known for its Baroque design. Tradition holds that tossing a coin into the fountain ensures a return to Rome. Vatican City, a separate city-state within Rome, Vatican City is home to St. Peter's Basilica, the Vatican Museum, 
and the Sistine Chapel marvel at Michelangelo's masterpieces. Spanish Steps, a grand staircase leading to the Trinita del Monte Church, the steps are a popular meeting place and offer a great view of the city. Piazza Novana, a lively square featuring the Fountain of the Four Rivers by Gian Lorenzo Bruni. The square is surrounded by restaurants, cafes, and Baroque architecture. Capitoline Hill, one of the seven hills of Rome, it houses the Capitoline Museum and Michelangelo's Piazza del Capillon. Palatine Hill, the centermost of the seven hills, it offers panoramic views of the Roman Forum and Circus Maximus. Explore the ruins of the Imperial Palaces. Via Borghese Gardens, the vast public park with gardens, museums, and the lake. The Borghese Gallery, located within the park, houses a remarkable art collection. National Roman Museum, a museum showcasing a vast collection of Roman art, including sculptures, frescoes, and mosaics. Everyone, we're back here on our map. The Google map shows a close-up here of Rome. I want to break it out in the four days that we actually spent in the city. Let's take a look at a better view. One of my favorite maps here, that way you can see um, all the highlights. Well, I shouldn't say all the highlights, but a lot of the major sites that um, I just want to break this down to you and color code it. Um, what I did was in the gold section up here in the shopping triangle slash Spanish steps, I made that a combination of day one. The reason why I did that is because I actually flew in into Rome that day, landed, in the afternoon and just wanted to keep it light walk around enjoy the scenery the shops and so forth and that way nothing is actually booked that day so that's the perfect day to head up on the northern side of the city um, again see the spanish steps the shopping districts of corso condati and uh, babaino all in that gold section here in the northern part of the city and of course um, you don't have to get as dogmatic I, over here I have Via Veneto you can include that if you like um, but what happened was on day two we wanted to get to the Vatican here in black and actually spend a half day there hit that as soon as they open because you have the cruise ships that come in a lot of folks want to see the Vatican City so late morning and beyond it will definitely get a lot uh, it will get busier there during that time and it's one of those places, um, again, as I said earlier, you wanna make sure you have your tickets ahead of time. That includes the Sistine Chapel, uh, St. Peter's Basilica. You can really spend a half day, if not a whole day in Vatican City. Um, then it's just a matter of crossing over, still stick with the black to the Borghese Museum. Um, you can spend a quarter to half a day up there. Um, ate lunch in, in the vicinity before going into Borghese and then spent a little shopping and that's why Via Veneto is in, in a separate category. On uh, day three, and, and of course you can split these days on how you want to do it, I just wanted to give my tidbits. Day three, uh, Trastavare is across the Tiber River. Um, you can spend a half day there and um, what's not on the map in this and roughly in this area is the Victor Emmanuel Monument. Go to the top and see the scenery of Rome. Um, here you have the Capitoline Hill, you have the Roman Forum, and the Colosseum. Basically make this part of your day of old roman isk, if you will, ancient ruins. And then since uh, Trastavere is across the river, you can combine that into one day in particular. Also in one day, you can what I would call the um, the West East tour, if you will, because again you hit the South with the Forum and Colosseum. You've already done shopping in the North, so you can go East West or West East and actually start off and hang out in Novana and then head over to the Pantheon, do a little shopping in the Gallery Alberto Sorde, make your way over to the Trevi Fountain, and then. Um, over to the National Museum of Rome. And of course, you can actually flip that, start off with the Rome, make your way to the Trevi, down to the Pantheon, and in Novana. I would also recommend um, spending time at night in, in Piazza Novana, and also spend some time at night with the Trevi Fountain. I think this whole area 
this blue section here is actually fantastic at night. So again, it's one of those things where yes, I broke it up by day, but I'm assuming that you would see it on multiple occasions, um, especially if you're gonna take one day and combine the shopping district here in the north and then make your way south through the ancient ruins. You can also stop by some of these places during the day, but you wanna make sure you hit them during the day and also at night. So hopefully that's a big help for you. That's one, two, three, four days um, in Rome. Uh, day five, uh, we've already talked about day trips. Um, I made my way down to uh, Pompeii and spent a half a day, three quarters of a day down there. And then went up to Naples, saw the museum of all the, the, uh, the items that they found in Pompeii. They actually store in the museum in Naples, had some fantastic pizza in Naples, and then took the speed train back up to Rome and to take off uh, the next day. So fantastic time. Again, I break it up day by day. I'm a big section by section type of person. But again, Rome is, um, I would say it's bigger than Florence. It's one of the big major cities in, in Europe, but you can still walk it. It's a, probably gonna be a tough walk depending on your situation. Um, you can make your way over to um, the Vatican City or Trastavere with a, with a taxi cab or just take a long stroll. You can do public transportation. Um, but once you're in the heart, um, say Novana, in between the National Museum, Borghese, and the ruins, you can make your way in this little section here and, um, and absolutely enjoy the walk. So hopefully that is a big help, folks. Uh, feel free to downgrade, uh, downgrade. <laughs> feel free to download uh, my Roman guide uh, with hyperlinks of uh, a lot of popular tours and also uh, see in the description field also. Shopping. Rome is a fantastic destination for shopping, offering a mix of high-end fashion, traditional artisan crafts, and unique souvenirs. Here are some popular shopping areas and recommendations for shopping in Rome. And here we're about to make fun of my Italian here. Okay, here we go. Via del Corso. One of the Rome's main shopping streets lined with a variety of shops, boutiques, and international brands. It's a great place for fashion shopping and finding the latest trends. Via Condotti, this upscale street near the Spanish Steps is home to luxury brands such as Gucci, Bulgari, and Prada. It's a prime location for high-end shopping. Trastavere. Explore the narrow streets of Trastavere. Known for its bohemian atmosphere, you'll find a mix of artists and shops, vintage boutiques, and unique stores. Campo de Fiore Market. Visit this lively Campo de Fiore Market for fresh produce, flowers, and local products. It's an excellent spot to experience the vibrant atmosphere of, of a Roman market. Porta Portesi Flea Market. Held every Sunday, Porta Portesi is one of Europe's largest flea markets. It's a treasure trove of vintage items, clothing, and antiques. The Mercado. This market offers a mix of fresh produce, gourmet food, and artisanal products. It's a great spot for food lovers. Antique Shops in Monte. The Monte District is known for its vintage and antique shops. Explore the cobblestone streets to find unique pieces retro clothing and quirky treasures. Artisan shops in Norvana. The area around Piazza Novana is known for its artisan workshops. You can find handmade leather goods, jewelry, and traditional crafts. Day trips. Rome is centrally located in Italy, making it an excellent starting point for various day trips to explore nearby cities, historical sites, and scenic landscapes. Here are some popular day trip options from Rome. Vatican City. Although a separate city-state, Vatican City is an easy day trip from Rome. Visit St. Peter's Basilica, the Vatican Museums, and the Sistine Chapel. Ostia Antica. Explore the ancient Roman port city of Ostia Antica. Wander through the well-preserved ruins, including theaters, baths, and mosaics. Tivoli. Visiting the charming town of Tivoli, home of the UNESCO-listed Via des Este with its stunning gardens and the ancient Hadrian's Villa. How was that Italian, huh? <laughs> Pompeii and Naples. Take a high-speed train to Naples and then a short trip to the archaeological site of Pompeii, a well-preserved Roman city buried by the eruption of Mount Versivius. 
I did this tour personally, and I just loved it. I loved going down to Naples. I spent time in the Naples Museum and also in Pompeii. I was there in July uh, for the very first time, and it was extremely hot down in Pompeii. So bring plenty of water for sure. Florence. While Florence deserves more than a day, it's possible to take a high-speed train and spend a day exploring its art, history, and architecture, including the Uffizi Gallery and the Ponte Vecchio. I spent about three to four days in Florence, um, but again, you can go there for a day, hit some major sites, and take a train back. Orvieto, known for its beautiful cathedral and underground caves, Orvieto is a picturesque hill town, just a train ride away from Rome. Orvieto is an absolute fantastic, cute little town. It was awesome having lunch there. SEC, visit the town of SEC, known for its Basilica of St. Francis. Explore its medieval streets and enjoy the serene atmosphere. There's also Capri. Take a hydrofoil from Naples to the enchanting island of Capri, known for its natural beauty, upscale shops, and blue grotto. The Amalfi Coast. While challenging for a day trip, it's possible to visit a specific area of the Amalfi Coast, such as Positano and Sorrento, to experience a stunning coastal scenery. <music> Tips. Wear comfortable footwear. A lot of cobblestone streets, especially in the historic center, so ladies, do not bring your stilettos. Use public transportation. Rome, you can definitely walk it, in my opinion, but worst case scenario, definitely use the public transportation such as the buses, subways, and so forth. Visit attractions early or late. So you want to beat the crowds. Most people sleep in on a vacation. You can hit the museums and so forth in the early mornings or wait till later on in the uh, late in the afternoon. My recommendation, if it's in the summertime or when it's very hot out, I would take an early afternoon appointment for some of the popular sites, especially the indoor sites such as museums and churches. Reserve tickets in advance. The Borghese Gallery, the Colosseum, the Vatican are an absolute must or you will be waiting in two to three hour lines, depending on what season you're in, to wait to go into those sites. As a matter of fact, I just assume book all your sites with all the links I'm gonna provide you in the description field or in my Roman guide. Dress appropriately for churches. A lot of the churches there, you must have your shoulders covered and you must have your knees covered. Stay hydrated and use sunscreen. Rome is in the Mediterranean, so in the summer months, it will definitely get hot. Be aware of pickpocketers. Rome is one of the largest cities in Europe and known for pickpocketers. That is for sure. So be careful of scams, people looking to put bracelets on you while their friends try to take off your watches and rings. Also be aware of people coming to you to sign surveys that ask you for the time. And one of the biggest things I would be concerned with too, here in the States, we tend to often place our cell phone on top of the table because we futz around with it. And then when we're done, we leave it on the table and we eat and talk to friends. I wouldn't do that over there. People just run by in some of your outdoor cafes or you'll get distracted by a friend of theirs and then they would take your cell phone right away from you. Also, keep all your bags. I wouldn't put them on the chair behind you. I would actually put them under the table between your legs. That way you won't forget them that way and also be less likely to get stolen. And I would say one of my last tips would be take de definitely take your time. I know Rome tends to be hustle bustle. It's a major, major city. It's definitely one of the largest cities in Europe, if not in Italy. A lot of things are going on. People are working. And uh, But I would just take your time, take in the attractions, really get educated, walk around, and just relax. For more on Rome destinations, and to book your excursions, please click the link down below in the description field and in the comment section and download your free Roman guide. Be sure to click on the like button, subscribe and hit that bell button and forward this video to a friend. Enjoy your trip to Rome, everyone. <laughs>